Good morning! Is it time for a little rant? Well, not so much a rant as answer a few questions. I've had a few. Of course, I get some through YouTube on here and I get some in person. So the first question, how long does it take to edit a video? Simple answer is about five hours, about two hours for Shop Tracer and then three hours for piecing it all together, cutting all the clips down to the right length, cutting out the garbage, putting all the captions on, doing the voiceover, etc. But also on top of that editing time is the number of times I will watch a video through. There's one there on the screen at the moment that I'm editing. So once I've chopped it all down and put it all together, then I'll watch it through. To give an example of how much I've got to chop it down, I usually get about 55 minutes of video out of 18 holes. And a lot of that is me to and throwing into the camera and wandering around a green and looking at putts and what have you. I've got this one down to 24 and a half minutes. So I've, I've got to try and shave a couple more minutes off that. Shame really, but you know, people just don't want to sit down and watch a video for 24 minutes. They'll watch an hour of TV, but they won't watch 24 minutes of video. So that is question number one. Question number two was, how often do you go out with the camera? And it's basically all the time. Uh, I obviously don't take it in competitions. I got enough to worry about without having a camera in competitions and of course it would be incredibly rude to my fellow competitors. Uh, there's one or two other rounds where I don't take it out. Uh, it might be a practice round, I might be working on something or, or whatever. But no, it doesn't come out with me every time but it's almost every time. Number three, golf carts. Don't you just love golf carts? I was playing the other day, I was on the green putting, and there was a shout of four. Now I thought it didn't apply to me because I didn't think anybody would be stupid enough to hit balls at a green when somebody's putting. So I didn't pay any attention, I didn't hear a ball land, uh, and then I sort of like looked round to see who was shouting for and who they might have been shouting for at. You know, just normal human curiosity. The only thing I could see was two people in a golf cart down the fairway. Now I did have a camera with me. And I had started actually 50 minutes ahead of them on the tee sheet. There was nobody between me and this two ball but because they had an engine at the backside, they had caught me in about nine holes. They were moving quite quickly. So now I know what four means. It means fuck off out the way. I've got an engine up my arse and I have priority over all you plebs who are walking, which is rather rude. I think golf carts should be restricted to four miles per hour walking, walking pace or just simply not used at all for anyone who isn't infirm. I mean, occasionally you go to a hilly course, where, and if you are deep into your 60s, a golf cart will help you get round and enjoy your day. But for some people, a golf cart is a means of bullying someone else. Now, quite a few months back, I was asked about the WHS. Have you seen the changes to the WHS? And I said no because I wasn't playing competitions or anything, I, I wasn't interested in it. I, I don't have a very high opinion of the WHS as it is. But it would appear that the changes are the stroke rating of the course versus par. So your handicap will change depending on whether the stroke rating is deemed easier or harder than the par of the course. And because I'm playing the yellows with my camera, because I play the Vistas tees, because that is what you would see as a visitor. You wouldn't go to the back tees, you, a lot of courses would not permit you. So I've been playing a lot off a handicap of four instead of six, because I'm a six handicap at the moment. 
which means I've lost a third of my handicap. Now, if you take two shots off me, it's an incredibly painful experience. If I was to actually attempt next spring to go from a six handicap to a four handicap, I would be having lessons every three weeks and I would be practicing a lot and I'd, I'd actually be hardly playing golf. To get to improve by a third is incredibly difficult. But for say a 26 handicap to be cut to 24, they wouldn't even notice. It is such a small amount, percentage wise, that they have to improve to make up the two shots they just lost. So that's another thing that I really don't like about the world handicap system. My Kongu handicap, because I still keep a record of the old way, is six. I'm, I'm actually um, it's written down somewhere. I, I write it down. It's, I think it's 5.7 or 5.8. So I'm, I'm not quite in the middle of the 5.5 to 6.4 range. I'm just below the middle. But I'm six handicap. And I really could do without playing golf with the pressure of losing a third of my handicap. Now there's been a bit on here that a um, friend sent me. It's about the Players Club in Bristol. And what they've done is they've introduced gross score prizes for the simple reason that really good golfers can never get in the prizes so they just don't take part anymore. And I've experienced the same thing. A few years back I had a 73 playing off a handicap of 5 on a par 72 course. The competition paid out the top five places. I was not in the top five. In fact, the person that won shot 18 strokes more than me. A stroke, I beat him by a stroke on every hole, and he beat me. You see, there might be different divisions. You might have a competition split into Division 1, 2 and 3. 0 to 12, 13 to 22 and 23 onwards. So monetary, the, the, the money might get split three ways, but there's only one person who wins the competition, there's only one person who gets the cup, and there's only one person who gets their name on the board in the clubhouse. And these days with the WHS, uh, apart from the one scratch competition your club holds every year, it's always high handicappers now. The, the, the WHS rewards mediocrity shall we say as opposed to good golf so some clubs are introducing a prize fund for scratch golfers but they're still not going to win the cup that's still going to be won by the 22 handicap who just played to 14 who then complains that they just got cut two shots or three shots or whatever it is and that's another thing if, if I go on to Golf Psychic's um, comments after one of his videos, you'll see comments along the line of, well I started the year for 16 handicap, I'm down to 12, I want to get a single figures. And you, you've got to applaud somebody who has that attitude. But when I'm sat in a golf club after a competition and you hear on the next table um, a guy saying, oh I love the world handicap system, you know I got cut two shots for winning two months ago. Well, I've just got them back. So much better than Congo, where I had to put in 20 bad cards before I got those back. I got them back in two months. So there seems to be a desire for people to have six, seven, eight shots more handicap than they actually need. So that they can win. So they can get their name on the board, they can get the comp they get the hundred pounds to spend in the pro shop on their account. The desire to actually get a lower handicap now seems to be limited to so few golfers. And the WHS actually helps those that want to keep their handicap as high as they possibly can. It helps them achieve that. The phone. Or rather the apps on the phone. I'm fed up of this. Because there are so few competitions at the Herefordshire, I wanted to put in some general play cards. So I played with my son, who has a hand, he's a member of a golf club, 
and he has a handicap. So I thought, you know, he can sign my card. So uh, we signed into the app and played my round of golf. And at the end, I'm punching the scores in here and I get to the bit of validation. So I sign it with my fingernail. Then it asks me who was the member who signed my card. Well, I didn't play with a member. Why do I need to play with a member? So I couldn't complete my general play round. Someone said, oh, you've got to get the England Golf Union app. No, I'm fed up of apps. I want to go backwards. I want to go back to a time where I, with a handicap, can go to any golf course and play with any person from any golf course fill a card in, sign it, take it back to my club, put it in a box, and then somebody will look at it and assess it. I want to go back to that. I don't want more bloody things on my phone. So there's that. Final question was, do you ask permission to go and video? And the answer is yes, no, and maybe. Depends on the situation. When I was starting, I never asked permission because I didn't want to draw attention to myself. I didn't want a dozen people round the first tee because some guys turned up with a camera. I, I, I have enough pressure on the first tee outside the clubhouse as it is without having an audience. I did get into bother one time and I, I can understand why. You know, when I pick a golf course to go and play, I'll look on YouTube and I'll see if somebody's been there before me. And this particular course, there was a five minute video of somebody who'd been there before me. And it was three young men with a phone, handheld, not on a tripod, and they'd recorded vertically, not correctly, which is landscape. And it was basically three young men messing around and taking divots the size of your welcome mat by your front door and laughing about it. Unfortunately they had put the name of the golf course in the title so it was forever attached to that golf course and it didn't reflect good on the golf course. So I, c I can understand people being nervous about somebody with a camera turning up. So, But I have taken to asking now, I normally ask when I get there, again for the reason that I don't want an audience. If I ask a week in advance, so many people might turn out just to watch the guy hit it into the trees off the first. Um, I mean, you don't want an audience on your first tee when you're playing in a competition and I don't want an audience when I'm recording. People do ask questions and they're normally very polite about it. Occasionally you get people shouting at you and sometimes they will shout things that uh, are not very pleasant. Recently um, I was coming down 18 and there was people on the first and they saw me with a camera. Now they didn't direct a comment at me but they shouted loud enough between each other uh, and the comment was of such a nature especially as I was in my downswing that I hit a bad shot and I thought why? Why, why, why would you do that? Would you want me to follow you round for 18 holes and shout at you in your downswing? So I'm afraid I dropped a ball and had another go, but my head was scrambled and I finished poorly. Um, you know, it, it just happens. If there'd been no shout, I would have probably parred the last as it was. I had a mulligan and I think it was a bogey with the mulligan. It's just a, just a shame, it kind of like put a sour taste. So that's why sometimes I do not announce myself as can I come and make a video because I just want mm. peace and quiet and nobody shouting at me. Well that's that. I'll see you in the next video. Ta-ra.